Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles, and I realise that my protests are starting to sound increasingly hollow at this point, considering this is the fifth French warship or tank video in a row, but I swear I am not doing this on purpose. I was just sitting around thinking to myself, what World of Warships video am I going to do today? And I, oh, hang on a minute, there was that battle where that guy did that thing and this thing happened, and then I went to look for it, and no, oh, guess what? It's the French Tier 10 battleship, <laughs> the Republique. I swear it's a coincidence. Honest Governor, would I lie to you? I know nobody trusts me at this point, but uh, whatever. It is what it is. So anyway, this is Karaya 1 in the Republique, French Tier 10 battleship. Um, an extremely good ship. And one that plays differently from the other Tier 10 battleships. Well, you don't have to play it differently to other Tier 10 battleships. You can follow the herd and cruise around the back of the map border, firing long-range salvos and missing everything that you shoot at, if you want. But you'll definitely do better if you take advantage of some of this ship's unique characteristics. What unique characteristics are those jingles? Well, seriously big guns with excellent penetration and a blisteringly quick reload. And I'm not joking about that rate of fire. The base reload on this ship's guns is only 24 seconds, and if you take the ship's unique upgrade, you can get that down to 20 seconds. Bloody hell, that's pretty quick. Yes, it is. Does the Republic have smaller calibre guns? Is that the reason why they fire so quickly? Oh no. No, these are 17-inch guns, not your standard high-tier battleship 16 inches. These are 431mm guns. They have incredible penetration. At ranges of up to 15 kilometers, they've got the best penetration of any tier 10 battleship, and they're only beat by the Yamato at ranges in excess of 16 kilometers. She's also the first French battleship that has decent secondaries. What do you mean, Jingles? All French battleships have got tons of long range secondaries. Yes, but until you get to the Republique, most of those secondaries are only 100 millimeter guns, which means they can't actually damage anything other than destroyers and are only really good for setting fires. The Republique, on the other hand, her secondaries consist of 127 and 152 mm guns. Despite that, however, do not be tempted to try to set this ship up as a secondary gun battery brawler, because while the secondaries are pretty good, and the ship does have a turtle back, making it difficult to citadel, but the ship's bow, stern and deck armour is only 32 mm thick, which means if you start getting focused down by light cruisers with IFHE, heavy cruisers, or rapid firing HE spamming destroyers, you're going to really wish you were somewhere else. Apart from anything else, getting in close and brawling with your secondaries is completely wasting one of the ship's other unique selling points, its extreme mobility. The ship's base top speed is 30 knots, but it also has an engine boost, and with the engine boost running, the only other two battleships that are faster than the Republique are the Bourgogne, and the Georgia. So that great mobility and the hard-hitting, accurate and extremely rapid firing for a battleship guns mean that the Republique is ideally suited to dominating the flanks. Something which the more astute observers amongst you have probably noticed by now, Karaya is absolutely not doing. And he is getting punished for it and he's almost certainly starting to seriously question some of his life choices. Remember, 32mm of plating, French battleships are high explosive magnets. You may have also noticed that Karaya had a single fire burning while being spammed with high explosive and he used his damage control, so now the damage control is on cooldown, he's still getting spammed with high explosive and yes, that is now a double fire. He's already gone through one heal. I'm not entirely sure exactly how much high explosive has been slung in his direction so far, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if it wasn't far short of all of it. How low can his health go before that heal comes off cooldown? And the answer to that question is... 819 health. <laughs> 819 health, the fires finally go out, he's undetected, they're still desperately trying to finish him off but they can't actually see him to aim at him accurately. 819 health. Not a good start. And when I say not a good start, I'm probably being a bit generous. Remember, he's burned through two heals at this point, 
So he's actually taken more damage than the total health of his ship. He's probably actually suffered something in the region of 110 to 115,000 damage, which isn't bad for a battleship that only has 92,000. Or to put it another way, he's easily taken more than 10 times the amount of damage that he's actually done so far, because he's only done 10,000. So, yeah, like I said, not a good start. So, with the assistance of that engine boost consumable, Karaya has finally gotten the hell out of High Explosive Town. Where do you go from here? Well, if you have the slightest bit of sense, definitely not straight back into that fight, although at the same time, you don't want to be just hanging around doing nothing. So, having now gained a safe distance, the Jean Bart's looking like a good target. A couple of points to note here, however. Karaya's target, the Jean Bart, is currently sailing through a thunderstorm front that's moving across that area of the map, so accuracy is going to be affected. Also, with the battle barely five minutes old, and the fact that Karaya is in an extremely low health top tier battleship, and therefore a very big fat and juicy target, the second he fired those guns, everybody who was capable of shooting back at him, shot back at him. Luckily, because he's managed to get some distance, that pretty much just means the Jean Bart and the Yamato, not the entire enemy team. And because his engine boost was running and he was manoeuvring, he was able to avoid the majority, if not all, of that return fire. A couple of other things to note. He's just chewing his way through his third heel. Luckily, since most of the damage that he's taken so far has been high explosive, he's actually capable of healing back quite a lot of this damage. And finally, thanks to the colossal ass-whooping that he's already received so far during this match, in combination with the Adrenaline Rush Captain skill, he's managed to get the already impressive 20-second reload of these honking great big 17-inch guns down to a mere 17 seconds. There are cruisers in the game that wish their guns fired as fast as this. Yes, Brindisi. Yes, Venezia. I am looking squarely at you. Although right now, Karaya is looking squarely at that Shimakaze. Oh look, a Shimakaze within 12 kilometers of a big cluster of three battleships. I wonder if there may be torpedoes coming. Well, there might be. There almost certainly are. But they'll be the last ones that Shimakaze ever fires. Oh, hello. It's a Salem, just over 15 kilometers away, sailing broadside on to a trio of Tier 10 battleships and a Tier 10 battlecruiser. He must be feeling confident. I don't think I've ever felt that confident. Karaya's first salvo goes wide of the mark. The Yoshino has a punt, and mostly misses. Karaya, of course, does not have to wait long to take a second stab at the target, and despite the fact that the Salem had gone undetected at the point where those shots were fired, Four hits are scored, but all four of them are citadels. <laughs> so <laughs> that's basically the full health of the Salem. 49,000 damage. Karaya is finally on the scoreboard. Two kills, 73,000 damage, and not far short of 2 million potential damage tanked. By the way, while we're waiting for things to heat up again, can we just have a shout out for this team's most valuable player so far? The Buffalo. The Tier 9 Heavy Radar Cruiser. Sitting in the middle of the map. The best place for a radar cruiser to be. And that's where he is. He's clearly thinking with his head instead of his arse. Having that radar in the middle of the map, as well as the visual spotting that the Buffalo has been able to do, has been giving the team so much information. It was his radar that led to the destruction of the Shimakaze. He's also capped Bravo. In fact, that one cruiser has probably been more used to the team than the team's entire complement of destroyers combined. Anyway, next a couple of things happen. First, we can't see him yet, although he can see Karaya, and we are going to see him, there he is, the Grosser Cure first, when he fires. The priority target skill warned Karaya that he was being targeted, he was already manoeuvring, and he managed to turn the nose in and avoid taking serious damage. The Thunderer pops up, to the south, but, well, he's kind of angled away, and he's not really bothering Karaya, and Karaya's angled against him. The Grosser Kerr first, on the other hand. Can anybody explain to me what this guy is doing? I mean, yes, he's given broadside to a Republic, and yes, okay, he has Turtleback armour, so it's going to be very difficult to Citadel him, but just having Turtleback armour doesn't make you immune to damage. Karaya has Turtleback armour, and look at the damage he's taken. It just makes you difficult to citadel. 
So what exactly is in front of that grosser Kerfus that he's so afraid of that he would rather sit here taking huge armor-piercing chunk damage from a Republique than turn the ship around? The only thing in front of him is the buffalo. And the buffalo's hiding. It's not like he's going to torpedo him or anything. So I have no idea what the grosser Kerfus is doing. As for the Brindisi, well, he just kind of got unlucky. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's going to leave a mark. <laughs> the secondaries, by the way, you might have noticed, uh, have been busy working the Thunderer over. Yes, the Thunderer is inside secondary range, but he's also close enough for something very nasty to happen. Watch this. Yes, he just citadeled the Thunderer from the rear. How the hell did he do that? 17-inch guns overmatch 30 millimeters of armor, but the Thunderer has 32 millimeters of rear plating. The thing about the Thunderer is that rear plating is flat, so it doesn't have to overmatch. It can punch right through and strike the Citadel or Fort ship's armor, which is 406 millimeters, but at that kind of range, the Republic can penetrate it. Now, while Karaya was occupied with the Thunderer, he did take a rather nasty chunk of armor-piercing damage from our friend in the Grosser Cure first. Didn't get Citadel though, turtle back armor scheme. And anything that the Grosser Cure first can do to the Republic at that kind of range and that kind of angle, the Republic can do back to the Grosser Cure first, except more often and more consistently because the guns load faster and they're way more accurate. Something else to note about the Republic are the excellent firing angles of that rear turret. Normally, when you have a ship with a turret in the rear, in order to get that turret firing, you have to give way too much broadside to be comfortable, but you don't have to do that in the Republique. He can angle it more or less 45 degrees to the grosser curve first and still get all of his guns firing. At this point, high explosive would almost certainly be a better ammunition option, with the grosser curve first pointing directly away from him. And he is in fact now switching to high explosive after unloading this armor-piercing volley. Looks like the Grosser Cur first is recovering some health. He wants to keep shooting at him, so he slowed the engines right down. Switching ammunition in this ship isn't really the ball ache that it can be in other battleships, even without the expert loader skill, because the guns just reload so quickly. He switched back to the armor-piercing now after setting a fire on the Grosser Cur first with a high explosive because he's now turning and presenting a much, much more juicy target. Still probably shouldn't expect massive damage numbers because it is a grosser cure first after all. Let's see how this one goes. Oh, yeah, very disappointing. I, I have to admit I was expecting more than that. Doesn't want to let that guy get away, reversing. Some of the shots from his forward turret clipped the island. Yep, undetected. Launches a bit of a Hail Mary, and again, extremely underwhelming, but those shots weren't locked on. Definitely doesn't want to let this guy get away. But the Grosser Cur first is angling again. So not a great target choice for the armor piercing that he's loaded. Instead he goes for the Dmitri Donskoy, which is a far, far juicier target. It's not a particularly well-armed cruiser, but the captain of that Dmitri Donskoy He's playing silly buggers with his throttle, so those shots landed way, way ahead of him. And now he's throttling up, so I'm pretty sure that all of these shots are going to miss and land behind him. Kind of frustrating. But at the point where he fired, you could see the trail of smoke from the funnel that quite clearly showed you that he was working up to full speed. Oh, hang on a minute, the Yamato. Oh yes, definitely. A much more predictable target. Broadside on. Not the toughest battleship in the world. The range is good. The accuracy looks good. Oh, well, not bad. And there's the high caliber award. But if at first you don't succeed in the Republic, it doesn't take an awful lot of time because the guns fire so quickly that you get the chance to try again. And can this be the Kraken? He only has to do 7,000. There it is. Kraken unleashed. Kill number five. That just leaves... Two ships on the enemy team, the Dmitry Donskoy. Oh, oh he is a, he is going to have a blind shot. Okay. Well, it worked out well for him the first time he tried it. He managed to score four citadels and kill the Salem. 
and he's actually scored some damage on the Dmitry Donskoy. <laughs> and that was clearly an unaimed shot. That was 12,000 damage fired blind, which means the Donskoy is probably down to about 22,000 health. At the moment, the Grosser Kurfürst is the only visible target. Shots out. Still firing the armor piercing. Oh, he's going to be... Not too bad. Oh, there's the Donskoy. And, yep, 21,500 health. Shots out. It is long range, but, well, when it comes to hitting targets at long range in a battleship, only the Yamato is more accurate. And the Republic is pretty accurate. And at the moment, he's firing twice as fast as a Yamato. So even if you miss, it's not like you have to sit around waiting 30 seconds to have another go. One of the other advantages that the Republic has in this kind of situation is higher velocity ammunition. 840 meters per second muzzle velocity compared to 780 meters per second on the Yamato. So in a sense, it's actually easier to aim with the Republic because the shells don't hang in the air as long. And so it's kind of like, it's kind of like using armor piercing composite rigid ammunition in World of Tanks compared to high explosive or regular armor piercing. You don't have to lead the target as much because the shells just get there faster. Come on. I, th I, feel, I feel like he deserves... A, no, no sixth kill. Sorry, Karaya. <laughs> You're just going to have to settle for a quarter of a million damage. Five kills, crack it unleashed, high caliber, over two million damage tanked in a game where you were down to 819 health before the match was even five minutes old. And I don't think many of us saw that one coming. But I hope we all enjoyed it. Thank you, Karaya, for sending that one in. Everybody else, take care. And I'll catch you next time.